Welcome back guys. Today I'm in the woods up here in this beautiful Maple Ridge looking for mushrooms. Today I want to talk to you a bit about myths surrounding mushroom foraging. Stay tuned. What a gorgeous day. I'm really thrilled to be out here looking for mushrooms. Today I was pretty excited, found some enoki mushrooms in the wild. Some of you may know what enoki mushrooms look like from the grocery store or a restaurant. They're these skinny white little mushrooms and are kind of rubbery in texture. In the wild, they don't look like that. They're actually orange with a brown stem, just like you see here. It's pretty excited to find them attached to ironwood in here. You may be wondering why the enoki mushrooms look so different in the wild. Well, commercially, they're grown in the dark, so that's why they're white. Fun fact. So on that note, that discovery was awesome. I want to talk to you a bit about sort of myths surrounding mushrooms and mushroom foraging that have been perpetuated um, over a long period of time. Let's get right into it. One of the myths is that all guild mushrooms are toxic and should be avoided. That's certainly not the case. Certainly there's a lot of guild mushrooms that are non-toxic, including this Aspen oyster. This one's a bit frozen this morning. It's a bit chilly and certainly you don't want to eat this one because it's full of bug detritus, poop. Um, but certainly the myth that guild mushrooms uh, you should stay away from because they're toxic that's not true. There are a lot that are toxic, but there are several that are really tasty and choice, including this Aspen Oyster Mushroom. One other guild mushroom that's been really tasty this fall has been the Late Fall Oyster Mushroom. They can be yellow, um, a bit of purpley, um, olive color, and they're excellent. I've dehydrated a bunch for use in a soup for later. So a blanket statement like all guild mushrooms are toxic is not true at all. So certainly you want to do your research um, before eating any kind of mushroom. But, uh, you know, there are toxic guild mushrooms, but not all of them are toxic. There are several that are tasty, including the bluet, lactarius, um, oyster mushrooms, lots out there that you can enjoy. This also ties into saying that there are no poisonous polypore mushrooms. While a lot of polypores are quite safe to eat, I've been enjoying the resinous polypore this fall. Um, it's a brown mushroom with a white edge that drips uh, fluid uh, underneath its tiny little pores. So it's very, very high water content in that mushroom. So there is a really toxic polypore mushroom. Its name is Hypopolis nigellans, and it can cause uh, like neurotoxic effects as well as kidney and liver damage. So certainly something you don't want to eat. Be very safe when you're foraging your mushrooms. All mushrooms are edible raw. Well, that's not really the case. Um, certainly you're used to eating a lot of raw mushrooms at the grocery store, but it's not advisable in the wild. There are very few mushrooms that you can eat raw. There's always risk of bacterial contamination. Wild mushrooms, even the edible ones, contain some toxins that you have to cook to eliminate so they don't cause problems for you. For example, morels are like that. So um, one that I know that is edible in the wild uh, in its raw form is witch's butter, which you can see down here on this log. Also jelly tooth fungus. A lot of people make candy from that. So very few I would eat raw um, be very careful. Always research before you have a mushroom raw. It's always best to cook them. The other thing why you wouldn't want to eat a mushroom raw is that mushrooms are actually very indigestible. So cooking them helps with their digestibility. There's a myth out there that all mushrooms are safe to consume with alcohol. That's not the case. There are some mushrooms, for example, in the inky cap family, that create a really nasty reaction if you're to enjoy them with alcohol. Members of this family contain varying degrees of coprine, not sure if I'm pronouncing that properly, but what it does is it enhances the effects of alcohol in the body. So what happens is, you know, if you consume these mushrooms with alcohol, you can expect a flushed face, really high heart rate, um, tingling of your limbs, some really nasty side effects, including nausea. So be careful. Um, you should always research um, the mushrooms that you have before consuming them with alcohol. When you're harvesting mushrooms, the myth is that you should always cut them at the base of the stem. Uh, before harvest versus plucking them out of the soil. So a lot of people get wound up if you post a picture of you know the mushrooms that you foraged and it looks like you know you have the full base a little bit of soil attached. Oh my gosh you've disrupted the mycelium. There's a few studies that have been done that show it doesn't really matter if you pluck them straight out of the soil or if you cut them cleanly at the base leaving the mycelium. More damage is done actually by tromping around through the woods, squashing the mycelium underneath your feet in the soil. So it doesn't matter if you cut from the base or pull from the ground, just be a responsible forager. There's a myth that you should never touch or put any wild mushroom into your mouth as you can get really, really sick and possibly die. Well, this is by and large 
a complete myth. It is safe to pick up, taste, and spit out any mushroom, at least in North America. In fact, tasting a mushroom is sometimes one of the really important aspects of identification. But the important thing is to always spit it out. Now, there is one mushroom, um, I'm still trying to decipher whether this is a myth or not. It's called the poison fire coral mushroom, and it's been found in Asia and also um, in Australia now. And apparently, I mean, this mushroom, if ingested, is like very, very toxic. It doesn't take very much to cause severe symptoms and death. But one thing I'm trying to sort out is that there are claims on the internet, and it is controversial, that just touching this mushroom can lead to swelling of your skin and peeling of your skin. I can't really find any evidence of that in some of the, uh, the medical reports. A lot of the toxicities reported with people that had actually ingested them. So I'm not really sure if uh, it's wise to touch and taste and spit these mushrooms. It remains to be seen. So if you live in Asia or Australia, let me know if you've run into this, uh, you know, this poisonous fire coral mushroom. I'd be interested to know what regional experts in your area say about this mushroom. Put some comments down below. When I travel, it's totally safe to pick mushrooms that look like the ones I find at home. That's false. Certainly when you're traveling, always be aware and seek out regional guides for when you're mushroom foraging. Many errors have been made um, if you're used to foraging for a particular mushroom in your home country and you travel looking for the same mushroom. Do you know there could be false lookalikes in uh, the place where you're traveling? That's happened before. Um, some travelers from Japan have come to Canada and BC and have accidentally forged a highly toxic mushroom, thinking it was something that was familiar from home. So always be really careful when you're traveling. Get regional guides and uh, speak to local people well-versed in mushroom foraging in that country. On the topic of edible mushrooms, uh, you may think just because a mushroom is listed as edible in a field guide means that, you know, you can eat it. And certainly if they're listed edible, you know, they, they are edible with proper preparation as per the species, but some people have allergies to mushrooms. So that actually may make the taste and spit dangerous um, for some people if you have allergic reactions. So certainly if you have a mushroom allergy, I would not advise that. Um, uh, for example, there are some people that uh, get sick with mushrooms that are improperly cooked. Like if you don't properly cook through a chicken of the woods mushroom, some people tend to get upset stomachs. Uh, and some have an allergy to that particular mushroom and their lips swell after eating it. So uh, just be wary if you're testing a new mushroom that's edible. Um, have a small bit first. See how it sits for several hours before consuming a large amount. All mushrooms are really easy to cultivate at home. Certainly you can see online there's lots of different kits out there so that you can grow mushrooms at home. Like oyster mushrooms, chicken of the woods, wine mushrooms, you name it, you know, even bear tooth fungus. Some people are offering spores and spore plugs to help you have mushrooms at home without going to forage for them in the wild. Some are very difficult to cultivate. Chicken of the woods is one of these mushrooms. I found a chicken in the woods this fall and I was really excited about it. And I thought, well, if I save some pieces of it, you know, I could use the spores and possibly you know, easily cultivate the chicken of the woods myself at home. Doing some research, I realized this is really challenging for that species. Not only do you need the special kind of wood that it grows on, uh, it really enjoys oak, for example, but, you know, when you put in, if you were to, you know, say get some plugs or whatnot to put into a fresh log of oak, it takes up to two years or more for it to actually, you know, fruit again and come out of the log so that you can harvest it. So a lot of people may give up um, before that time thinking that their uh, their spawn failed or something like that. So really important to do your research. Um, oyster mushrooms tend to be a little bit easier to cultivate. I looked into that. I probably will do that here at the cabin. I'll cut down a birch, a uh, fresh birch, and uh, maybe in the spring I'll get some plugs of oyster mushroom spawn. And usually they fruit within the year of... Uh, crazy leaf. Usually the mushrooms will come out uh, within the year of, of you inoculating the log. So not every mushroom that you're going to buy online to try to cultivate on your own is easy to cultivate. Thanks so much for tuning in today guys. I hope you have a wonderful week as always. Take care.